There's a movement being felt in this country led by senators' wives, teachers, and housewives. It's a movement against lyrics and values portrayed by certain rock bands. Now, for the next two nights, Nightcast reporter Marty Griffin will examine what's being called by many porn rock and how many Oklahomans are becoming involved in changing the way albums are sold to youngsters. Marty, why are so many really concerned about uh, the lyrics to a song? I feel it has a very, very negative influence on some very, very young people. Olivia Jones, the wife of Congressman Jim Jones, and others blame rock lyrics for such things as a rise in teen rapes, drug use, and suicide. Before a crowd of 10,000 Tulsa teenagers, the group KISS sings of love and lust in Detroit. In Philadelphia, before nearly 100,000, Ozzy Osbourne sings of dying and suicide. And Prince, in the movie Purple Rain, talks of a sultry affair with a girl named Nikki. The reason I would like to In a meeting room at a Tulsa high school, Olivia Jones, the wife of Congressman Jim Jones, tries to enlist the aid of Tulsa's PTA in her nationwide fight to force record companies to warn parents of what music they are buying for their children. She gives a one-hour speech and slideshow about an issue she strongly believes in. There are elements of violence in any society, but what we're talking about here is the promulgation of totally unrestrained violence against women, against children, and then finally in suicide against themselves. And it is vicious, and it is encouraged by our idols. In record stores across Tulsa, albums by the groups Olivia Jones and others have the strongest objections to are selling like hotcakes. But many of the teenagers who buy the records say some songs do provoke violence, drug use, and sex under certain circumstances. I think there might be some, if you're listening to it more or less, maybe at clubs and if kids are drinking. I think then it might make you become more violent. But can that violence be tamed by labeling records? Many rock singers like Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley of Kiss say no. And before they allow anyone to label their records, they will get out of the music business. Now, the wives of every Oklahoma congressman are involved in this fight against some rock lyrics, and they will be speaking all over the state, trying to get more and more folks to write or call record companies. They don't want records censored, but they do want warning labels placed on certain albums and full disclosure of questionable lyrics and songs. All right, Marty, what, uh, what's in the second part of your segment tomorrow night? Tomorrow night, we'll take a look at it from the rock star's angle. We'll talk to the members of the group KISS and how they feel about the possibility of labels being put on their albums. All right, Marty, thank you. Surprise roadblocks will be formed in Tulsa starting tomorrow. Can some rock music be blamed for an increase in teen rapes, drug use, and suicide? A group of senators' wives, teachers, and housewives called the Parents Music Resource Center say yes. But many musicians and music experts disagree. Nightcast reporter Marty Griffin has been looking into the situation. Um, I understand this is called rock porn? That's right, mainly because of some very suggestive lyrics. Last night, we talked to some of the leaders of the efforts to rid the music industry of so-called rock porn. Tonight, we talked to some rock musicians and local music leaders about the efforts to preserve their right to write and perform what they want. For more than 10 years, Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley have been playing rock and roll for the band Kiss. For much of that time, either their appearance or their look has been controversial. Now, groups like the Oklahoma Parents Music Resource Center founded by the wife of Congressman Jim Jones, want groups like Kiss, Prince, Twisted Sister, and Wasp to put warning labels on all of their albums. But Gene Simmons wants no part of it. He doesn't think labeling is the answer. The answer is in better parenting. You want to be a better parent? Be a better parent. You want to censor your kids? Do it at home. You come in the outside world, everybody's got a right to do whatever they want to do. Paul Stanley says rock musicians have used sexual lyrics long before Kiss. Rock lyrics he says the women protesting his songs grew up dancing to. You listen to somebody singing Good Golly Miss Molly, sure like the ball. And he sure wasn't singing about dancing. Tim McKee agrees wholeheartedly with Paul Stanley. He's the founder of the Oklahoma Music Majority and a firm believer there is no place for censorship in rock music. Censorship begins and ends in the home. It's the parents' responsibility and not the government or any special panel to determine what's obscene and what's not obscene. Experts agree record companies will begin voluntarily labeling certain releases long before Congress forces groups like KISS to impose an age limit at its concerts or on its records. Because, as some would say, rock and roll will never die.
Now, the members of KISS say if their record company wants to label their albums, they will take their business elsewhere. Marty, have any states taken any legislative action against this rock porn? Well, Maryland is trying to pass a law that would require you to be 18 to buy certain albums, X-rated records, for example. And in San Antonio, Texas, you have to be 14 to go to any concert. That's Johnny Mathis or Kiss. 14. That's right. All right. Thank you, Marty. Despite heavy lobbying by President Reagan, A, do the Contra rebels will have to wait. Today, the House voted against the plan, 222 